How well does the 1070 hold up in Star Citizen in 2022? That is what this video is about. We've been looking for a new minimum spec GPU. We've tested loads so far. So far, we're getting closer. I think the 10, or well, the 1660 series, they might be the option, but this video I think is quite important because we're gonna see what eight gigabytes does of VRAM versus six gig. Because with the six gig cards, we've seen this weird frame drops. It looks like the game is running out of memory, even with six gigs, even though CRG are targeting four gigs for the minimum spec. So this one will be interesting to see how well does it perform? And especially in Lawville where we see those drops, can this pull ahead and will the 1% lows be better? Let's get into it. The test setup for this is the same as the last lot with these GPUs that we've been testing. 5800 XDD, which eliminates any CPU bottlenecking basically with these graphics cards. We're all GPU bound, which is great. 30 gigs of RAM, 1080p for all the minimum spec testing. And if you want to see the rest of the settings, I'll put them below. Let's get into some benchmarks. So the 1070, as we talk over these results, will jump around a little bit. Some of the results it's higher versus the different 6060, some of it's, them it's lower. I think that's probably down to the memory, the GDDR5 memory that this card has got, as well as the base 1660 model. So in some areas, that means it's got worse performance, but actually I think this card's got more CUDA cores and uh, it's a different architecture as well. It's not the same generation as these 1661. So, it will jump around depending on what you're doing. You'll see in some areas it's better, in some areas it's worse. But let's get to, to the really interesting stuff which is happening in Lawville. And as we suspected, there is some interesting stuff going on with the memory. You'll see here a significant difference in terms of the 1% lows. That 23.1 doesn't look like a lot, but actually in terms of playability, in terms of going around the city, it is a, it's hinting that there are none of these drops that we've seen with these other six gigabyte cards. So although the actual frame rate overall is slightly lower than the 1660 Ti, it's a much more playable experience because you're not getting these huge frame drops which seem to be down to memory. And here is some footage demonstrating the frame drops. We saw a bit this last time. On the right, we've got the 1660 Ti and on the left, the 1070. And you'll just see the big difference in frame rates. And it isn't all the way around the run, but at various points, the all these 6 gigabyte cards are having these drops where they're really struggling. And as you see in the red there on the Display Info 4, it looks as though it potentially is memory related. And, the 1070 just doesn't have any of that. It kind of sails around Lawville. Like we saw in the results, the overall frame rate isn't as high, but the 1% lows are much better. Uh, and, and therefore, in my opinion, it's a much more playable experience. These frame drops are not nice. And it's in some of the comments, uh, people have been saying that they have experienced these all around the system. I've only seen them in Lawville, but I've not done testing in all parts. I've not been to New Babbage, for instance. Uh, and so some people have said, if you alt tab out, that can help fix it. But it seems as though there is something going on here. Um, and the real, it looks at this stage, it could just be this patch, like we said before, and maybe the next patch they'll do something. But we'll see if CRG does anything to kind of fix this or whether this is something that's gonna last into the future. I, I would have thought, like we said last time, it's gonna to be tough for them to reduce VRAM usage as the game can, continues to get more complex. But and just to finish off the results, you'll see here the no clouds version of Lawville. So this is what we've been saying, that if you are not fussed at all by the clouds, at least in the short term while CIG give us the option to turn them off, you can see how this performs. And this actually performs a bit better, again, than the 1660 Ti. This is its best result for the 1070. So there's maybe something about the clouds and maybe about the architecture of the 1070, which doesn't really like the clouds so much. So without them on, a good result. But there's just the caveat with this is that we don't know how long CRG is going to give us the options to play with no clouds. What we kind of guessed in the last video might be happening with the 6 gig cards and lower, it seems to be the case. And so we're in an interesting spot now where this actually potentially, even though it's actually a bit slower than mostly the 1660 Ti in some areas, I think if you had an option, uh, you would probably want to get the 1070 because of the extra VRAM and it seems to not make the, these frame drops seem to disappear. Obviously, getting a 1070 now will have been it will have been a card in use potentially for a long, long time. So it's hard to know whether that's a great suggestion, whether it's a good idea to buy a graphics card that's been in use for six years. Obviously, the mining craze has all happened over the last few years as well. So to be fair, even if you're buying a 1660, there's a good chance, as I found last time, that they may have been even modified for mining or just been hammered being mining anyway. It leaves us in an interesting place in terms of recommending a minimum spec system. I'm not gonna quite make a call yet because I still want to test the uh, AMD 5600 XE just to see where that would 
kind of slot in but that is again a six gigabyte card so it'll be interesting to see if that also suffers from the same frame drops as all these other six gigabyte cards so that's another this one hopefully that's been interesting if you like it like it subscribe if you like this more technical look at and i'll see you soon bye